We have two new postulates for this section, postulate 13 and 14, both of which are very important to not only this section, but geometry in general, especially postulate 13. Postulate 13, which is the parallel postulate, and we'll talk about that in a moment, is what defines the geometry we're studying as Euclidean geometry. And I'll talk about this a little bit more in class. But basically, if we have the parallel postulate, and if that's true in the geometry that we're studying, then we are studying Euclidean geometry. And the parallel postulate tells us this. If I have a line, any given line in the world, and a point not on the line, then there is exactly one line that will pass through point P and be parallel to the given line L. So L is parallel to M, and M passes through point P. Take a moment and digest this. It means I can draw any line. We'll name this one J. And I can put a point anywhere. And there will only be one line through that point that is parallel to J. Let's look at the perpendicular postulate now. This has a similar idea to the parallel postulate. Postulate 14, the perpendicular postulate, tells us that if we have a given line and a point not on that line, so this should look very familiar so far, but this time the postulate tells us that there is exactly one line through P that will be perpendicular to L. Here we have L perpendicular to M, and M passes through point P. Those are our two new postulates. Make sure that you understand those before moving on. And here is your first homework problem. For each of these statements, you're going to decide if the blank should be filled in with always, never, or sometimes. You should have these statements in your own notes. Go ahead, work those out, and we'll talk about them in class. If you're ready, we'll talk about part two. So the second main idea that we're going to talk about in this section is what happens when we have three lines all lying in a single plane. And not only that, but what we're going to do is we're going to have two lines that we can draw on a piece of paper so they're coplanar. And the third line is going to intersect both these lines at distinct points. This third line is called a transversal. So a transversal is a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at different points. In this drawing, line T is the transversal of lines L and M. What we're interested in so do make sure you understand transversal before we move on because we will use that term regularly now. But what we're interested in are the angles that form. And we can see that when we have those two lines cut by a transversal. So lines L and M with transversal T. We have eight angles that are formed. And in the next video, we'll talk about how those angles can be paired up.